I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. The 19 Acura ILX Tech A Spec top trim. And A Spec is the only way you can get this red interior. Yeah, that's probably one of the first things you've noticed while watching us in here. So, this is the last Acura in the lineup to get the new look. It's got the new grille, the new headlights, different taillights, and a different bumper. That's right. But you're getting excited about looks. Let's talk about horsepower first. Hit me with the numbers 201 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. Solid numbers? Pretty good numbers, and this is the entry level Acura, so it is the ILX, the smallest one that they make. It's decent, it's a 2.4 liter, naturally aspirated, no turbo, which is nice to have these days because everything's got a turbo, so it's nice to experience something a little bit different. It's definitely not the fastest, but it's decent. It's more than you'll ever need, but you'll want more. And that engine is mated to an eight speed dual clutch. I really like this transmission. Does it shift quick when you click the paddle? Yeah, that's all I ever want from a transmission. I like when you can see the needle go yeah, exactly. Okay, hit me with some downshifts. Downshift, 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 almost instant. And we also do have the additional sport mode down here, so you can leave it in auto, it'll shift a little bit faster for you. We should probably mention why we're driving this. Oh yeah, okay, so Acura flew us out to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, we took a couple bird and lime scooter rides around the town. Columbus! It's actually pretty nice. It's gorgeous. Hit the notification bell. Ah, oh, you gotta hit the notification bell now. Yes, we did. But enough about those. Let's talk about why we're here. We went to the facility where they actually build the NSX, which is pretty cool. Yes, because the 2019 has some updates. Yeah, so we got to sample a lot of super handling all-wheel drive. Spoiler alert, the NSX is wild. Yeah, as we know, because we drove the 2018, but today we got to drive yeah. the 2019. So quickly, let's touch on that. It's orange. It's got a color-matched front bumper thing instead of chrome. Yep. A couple handling additions different tires to make it stickier. Yeah, and it was cool to just see everything, how it was built in a nice, very clean facility with lots of robots. I yeah. was kind of surprised by that. I don't know why, but I just really like seeing that. Okay, back to this new ILX. Okay, right, so handling for this ILX, it handles okay. My biggest problem is probably the steering. It's so loose. You call something an A-spec, you kind of expect a little bit more to get a little bit more handling out of it, but like, it's just very loose to handle. It may feel loose, but it probably gets you right through everything just fine. This is front wheel drive, so it will not pull you through corners as much as a super handling all wheel drive car would, just like the TLX. The suspension is overall very comfortable though, like super comfortable over potholes. I did notice that it was kind of loud in here, just a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely some road noise that translates in. Yeah, but the overall suspension, comfort-wise, it's very, very good. We do not have adaptive suspension, so the standard suspension is just very good. You won't be sending this into corners that much, but if you did, you'd be okay. <laughs> well, this is like entry-level Acura. Exactly. Which is like entry-level Honda luxury. That's right. Even though some Hondas are very luxurious, like the Accord. Yeah, and you buy entry-level luxury cars for how they look mostly, and the interiors, I think. And sending it through cliche Ohio corner, oh it's, uh, <laughs> it's decent. It's definitely decent. <laughs> Shout out cliche Ohio corner. Now we should talk about looks because I kind of veered off into the stuff that I like. Okay, main thing, it doesn't have that like silver front grill thing anymore. Yeah, exactly. I like this new grill. A lot of people don't, but I think a lot more do like it. Yeah, I agree. It's way better than their old one. It's like way more aggressive. It just looks nice in general. And they were showing us that they're basing all their future stuff off this concept. Yes, the precision concept, I believe. So there's a precision concept exterior look and a precision concept cockpit. Yes, the interior. Yes, so the cockpit refers to their new infotainment that's in the RDX. So they're telling us that the RDX is peak concept reached. This doesn't have that yet. Not yet. None of the other Acuras have that infotainment yet. Because they're all getting like mid-cycle refreshes, not major refreshes. Yeah, so from the grill, let's move on to the headlights. All right. They are changed up. They do match everything else. It is like, a wilder look. Like, it definitely looks like a more fun Acura. Yeah, and I noticed that they use white on the LEDs for this model, for the running lights, whereas some of their other ones, they use amber. I think I like the white. Amber is different, but the white just looks better to me. Do you like all the triangles and stuff in the bumper? I didn't think I would, but I keep looking at it, and it does look good overall. I think the whole Acura lineup has a very cool look right now. The thing that looks the least Acura right now is the NSX. Yeah, actually, you're because, right. Because think about it, the Acura NSX was built before they started doing their new stuff, before the, the concept, 
but they can't really fully refresh the NSX right now because it's pretty fresh. Yeah, and that's why they had to paint that beak yeah, thing because yeah. that was old Acura. I think when the NSX gets upgraded, it's gonna look to this look unreal, it'll be wicked. But yeah. I think they should add Lambo doors. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I fully endorse Lambo doors, scissor doors, up doors. <laughs> Acura product planning guys who we've been hanging out with. Yeah. <laughs> please do it. Also make that one louder too. I'll throw yeah, that in there. At least an optional valve exhaust. Yes. Back to this car. Okay, so rear bumper looks cool because there's a nice diffuser. My biggest complaint is that there's single chrome exhaust tip. I would like dual. Yeah, dual or maybe like a single dual. But it does look nice. It wraps around cool. It's got a cool fun shape. Do you like the taillights? They've got a nice outline. They're, they're smoother. They're the whole new Acura look. And we also have an integrated little trunk spoiler thing. It does look pretty nice too. Overall, the whole car looks good. And I like that they added A-spec different wheels now. So overall, done with the looks, done with the handling. I think you should drive. Talk about the interior and maybe a little bit of your handling. Yeah, the power's not the best. Yeah, it's not. Send it into this next cliche Ohio corner and tell me how the handling is. Here we go. Relatively fun. Relatively fun is a good way to put it. If I had this car, and I wanted to have a little bit of fun, it would have been had. <laughs> fun would be had. So let's get to the nitty gritty about the interior. Very, very, very comfortable, nice red leather seats. Yeah, the seats are very, very comfortable. The driver has adjustable lumbar, but the passenger does not. They're power seats though. Yeah, I can go up and down, but this seat here can't, and it feels very high. The passenger seat does feel higher than the driver's seat. But these are like 10 out of 10 for comfort. Oh yeah, for sure. And we've got cool red on the door panels on the side, so it actually feels like you're in a red cocoon. Of <laughs> a cocoon? It actually feels like you're in a red cocoon of interior. Yeah, it does. Cocoon. And you do know that I'm a sucker for red interiors, right? Sucker. Sold. So the rest of the interior, very nice. There are some cheap plastics here and there, but everything looks really nice. However, best feature, no gloss black, gloss gray. I think that's fine. I think it's fine too, because you can't see fingerprints as well. What I like is that we actually have a manual e-brake, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and a big old shifter, and okay. it's normal. But there's a funny thing with the shifter. Oh yes, there is. To click it into gear, you need to like do a weird thing to click up on it. You don't just press it, you flip it up. Why? I don't get it. Would the cup holders pass a small cup of coffee test? I think so. Yeah? What about the visors though? Three. Two, one, yes. yes! Good job, Acura. Now let's talk about the more important thing to me, the infotainment. Which one? We have, <laughs> we have the double screen infotainment that we hated on the TLX. Yes. They need to roll out the infotainments incrementally between models. They started with the RDX, the rest are eventually gonna get it. Yeah, that's true. But you know what's weird? The NSX has the Honda Civic infotainment. There's a weird <laughs> amount of like getting things on the same page. Yeah. I think it'll eventually all get there. Oh, for sure it will. But I'm pretty disappointed that we don't have that infotainment. Even with the trackpad, I got pretty used to it in the RDX. But this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, there's always points for that, but that's not a touch screen, so it's just a little bit annoying to use. But you have a dial, so it's still like, yes. cool. And like, you know, dial over touchpad, like it, it's a weird I know, area. and we've established that we just generally do not like dual screen infotainments because they just never work right. And this has the tech package on the A-Spec, which means you get like live traffic and more navigation stuff. Yeah. But do we ever really trust navigation from a car brand? No, always Google Maps. If it's not Google Maps, it's garbage. And that's not car brand's fault. They all suck across the board. It's Except like, Mercedes is pretty good. Yeah. But that's like the brand new A-Class, which is just new. And they're running off Nokia. Yeah, exactly. Which is a phone company. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you just need phone screen infotainment. Yeah. Done. The gauges are pretty nice. Yeah, they are. We've got analog gauges. We've got some digital stuff in the middle. It's very simple. I think it's proper entry-level Acura gauges. I love how simple they are. They look very good. They kind of remind me of how simple Kia and Hyundai gauges are because I love those gauges. They're very simple, just like Genesis gauges as well. I think these are a little nicer because they protrude a little bit more. Nicer, yes. I'm just saying how easy they are to read. Yeah, for sure. So we do have rewinding satellite radio stations with this older infotainment as well. And how easy is that to use? Not very easy. We have 12 rewinding satellite radio stations but you do need to click an extra button to get to the rewinding mode and then if you change the channel on your steering wheel it moves that screen away so you have to click that channel again oh weird so how about lane keep lane keep works very well this is honda sensing so whatever acura sensing if you want to call it that it works very well and we also have adaptive cruise because that's part of the whole thing so now let's finish it off with the price okay we actually do have a price even though this is brand new because that seems to be the latest trend is releasing cars without a price the price starts at 29,990, which is very good for an entry level but the one we're driving is obviously the top trim just over thirty-five thousand dollars awesome so would you recommend it for someone who wants to get into acura yeah i would say so this is a very nice car all right so don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell patreon.com straight pipes and join our membership i'm yuri i'm jacob and we're going for a drive
description break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even. We didn't do that.